Welcome back to the Girl Cave. I am ready to play with the Mini Kit Monday girls, Becky, Kathy, Tracy, Dolly, Daisy, and Shannon. My kit is ready to go. Let's get started with layout number one. I got my pictures. I have my kit. I'm gonna start with this one because it has a lot of embellishments in here. And I want to be able to, whatever I don't use, move forward to the next layouts. And I forgot to include white cardstock. So I'm going to add these. My first task is to choose which paper I'm going to use. So I have the white cardstock as my background. And then I have two sheets of printed paper. And they both have the same theme with the life's journey. So this one says life is a beautiful and this one says, I remember when, love. And what else it says? It says, life. It seems just like yesterday you were a small. So either one of these will go well with my layout, which I'm going to try and tell my mom's story in just two pages. Not all of her story, but major highlights. Either one of those two will work. And then for matting my pictures, I wish I had two of this one, but I don't. I only have one, so this is Arjun. And then this one, this cardstock, I have two. And this one, I have two. So these would be to mat the entire layout, like this. I could use this one. I could. It looks a little plain, but I could use it. And I could use this one. I don't like, I don't like the contrast. I really don't. So let me see with this green, which if I'm honest, is my mother's choice of green. She doesn't like that lime green. So would that work? That would work. And would it work with this one? Eh, I'm not feeling this one. I'm not really feeling it. So I'm going with this. This, These are my choices. So I will put these back into the kit just in case I need something else for a future layout. Let's get started. Because I'm going to mat the entire layout, I take my white cardstock and I trim an inch off of each side. So it measures 11 by 11. And that way when I mat it, I will have a half inch border of the green paper showing around the entire layout. The pieces that I trim off of the white cardstock, I actually save them because in the future, if I want to use washi tape, I like the way that it looks when you apply it to the white base. The colors show more vividly, so I save them in case I want to use washi later on. Because I'm using heavy cardstock, I'm going to take the green background and I'm going to actually gut it out. Most of us do that trick because we don't have enough paper and we need to save every little piece that we can for the future. So I choose to gut out maybe like a 10 by 10 inch. I think that should be wide enough. And I'm glad that I chose to do that size because later on I chose to move the paper instead of having it centered I wanted them closer to the inside edge so when you look at the layout itself it looks like a continuous piece of paper. For a while I was having issues with my Fiskars trimmer but some of you mentioned that they have really good customer service and I decided to give them a call and sure enough, they sent me a replacement arm free of charge and it's been working beautifully now. I'm going to keep those pieces of green cardstock in the kit in case I want to use them in one of the future layouts for this month. And this is where I'm placing the white cardstock all the way to the edge. So when I place both sides of the layout together it looks like one continuous piece of paper rather than two separate 12 by 12 sheets if that makes sense 
you'll be able to see what I mean in just a minute. Right here. See, I'm going to place them together so it will look like one continuous piece of paper. There's absolutely no gap. And now I'm going to move that printed paper around to see how much I want on either side of the layout because I don't want it six inches on each one. I want it off center and notice how I make my measurements very technical. I just eyeball it and make a line where I want to cut it. Actually later on I choose to have less on the left side of the layout so I go back and I cut a little bit more. And now I make sure that it measures 11 inches in length so it's the same size as the white base and I glue it down. Again making sure that I take the paper all the way to the inner edge so it looks like a continuous piece of paper. And there it is. Voila! So now that my base is done, on this side here I'm going to place all of my embellishments and each embellishment has some significance to the story of her life. And then on this side, this side will be filled out with the journaling. So because I have so much to say, it will be printed out um, so that I can fit all of the little stories that I want to tell visually here. I'm going to pause the camera right now because I'm going to sort all of my embellishments because I know that I have multiple of the same icons. So like for the globe, I know I have several and I'm going to organize them. And that way, when I start placing them here, I know which one to choose because some of them I want to choose a larger icon and some of them a smaller icon. But I have to see how many will fit here before I make that choice. So I'm going to pause the camera for a little bit while I do that work so I don't kill my battery. I'm coloring the flower pot with different colored markers because my mom used to take the flower pots and paint them with uh, nail polish and make them so beautiful. I always remember that as a child and I loved it. Now, except for the journaling, which will go here on this side, this layout is, is done. I've included all of the little visual reminders of those story starters that will go on this side. And of course, there the journaling will not be shown because, it, you know, it's private. But I love how this, I mean, it's a lot. It's a, You've been scrapbooking for 20 plus years. You understand the term sticker sneeze. This is not sticker sneeze. This is embellishment cough. That's what I'm calling it. But each icon here plays a significant role in the, telling the story of my mom. If you can see right here in the middle of this of this chaos, I put a cross because okay, let me let me try and say this without choking up. Everything that my mom went through as a child and as a young person helped build up her faith, and her faith is what got her through a lot of these things and made her the woman that she is today the woman that we appreciate that we admire and that we love so i placed the cross in the middle of the page because obviously it's super important and there's funny things too like my mom okay my mom my mom never learned how to jump rope or ride a bike because of something you know as, as a child she was sick and later, as an adult, she tried to learn how to swim. And she helped a lot of children, including my siblings, 
uh, to learn how to swim. Like she, she would just help us and just like, okay, put your face in the water and blow bubbles. And she, she really helped us learn how to swim, but my mom can't. And as an adult, she tried to learn how to swim. And it was so funny because we would hold her hands the way that she held our hands when we were little. And we'd say, okay, put your hand, put your face in the water and blow bubbles. And she would do it, but oh my God, she would not let go of you. And she never got her ponytail wet. <laughs> that was, that was the most that she could do. But you know what? She, as she developed and as she grew as a person, she lost fear and she, oh my gosh, she went, um, she's gone whitewater rafting, even though she can't swim. She went zip lining. She's traveled around the world. She cannot, right here, where is it? In this mess. She cannot catch a ball. Like you can't throw a ball at her, but she has, she's grown and she's persevered and she's tried and she's pushed herself and she can play some mean bocce, okay? She will be my dad at bocce. She's amazing. So little things like that. The globe, the little iron that she learned how to um, iron with that big antique iron where you would put the coal in it. I have a scissors, the chicken. My mom grew up in a farm at one point, like in the country. She's a real country girl. And this is something she's proud of. And we are not so much, but it's part of my mom. My mom can actually... Oh, Lord, do I want to say this on YouTube? Okay, my mom can take care of a chicken and get it ready for dinner, if you know what I mean. Yes, yes, she can. <laughs> um, she loves to garden. She loves her mountains. She loves coffee. She loves uh, to read. She loves Edgar Allan Poe and Shakespeare, and that's why I included the little raven right here. She was the one that got me to love Edgar Allan Poe. I read the Telltale Heart because of her, and I just fell in love with, with him. So lots of little things. Obviously, I'm not going to mention everything. Some things are private. That's why I'm not showing the, the journaling. But I know it's a lot. But that's my mom right there in a nutshell. She has that, that loving heart. She volunteers with hospice. Like, she, she's just a very kind soul. Even though she loves the mountains and growing up on the island, she did live in New York for a while, so I included some buildings there. She still wants to go to Machu Picchu and see her llama, so I included one llama. Um, so there's a lot in here. This right here, I don't know if you can see. Let me bring it up right there. She does not at all like people to cuss around her so that's a big no-no so no cussing she collects the antique keys she's brilliant there's five of us in our little family she loves ladybugs and gardening i put the little music tab right there because she loves beethoven and she cannot be out in the sun because like i said she feels that heat so lots of little uh things about my mom that make her who she is. I hope that all the beautiful moms out there had a wonderful Mother's Day. This is my first layout that I've created for month of May in the Mini Kit Monday Challenge. I hope that you join me next week. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you be part of my community. Bye.